Strange yet true stories, tales from the light side, the dark side, and the other side. I'm Steve White. Doppelgangers For centuries, thousands of people have claimed to see their twin or exact double. There have been cases leading all the way to the 17th century. This twin or double has been given the name doppelganger. The definition of doppelganger is an apparition or exact double of a living person. Is there someone alive that looks exactly like you? Are they seeing apparitions or are people seeing a version of themselves from a parallel reality? We have gathered 10 stories that will leave you questioning the nature of reality. After listening to this, you might be asking yourself, is there another me floating around out there? One, Dad's Doppelganger. I never heard of a doppelganger until reading stories on this site, but last night I saw my dad's. I live with my parents and always want to get away for a while to have time to myself. I had been hanging out with a friend. Then after I dropped them off and went to a graveyard, I go there to enjoy the silence of the night, but I kind of got a creepy feeling and left soon. I went to get some fast food before I went home. When I was turning at the stoplight to head home, I looked right over at the car next to me, and it was my dad in his car. He had a very tired look on his face. I was wondering why he didn't wave at me or act like he saw me. I also wondered why he didn't have his hat on. He never leaves the house without wearing one. I also wondered what the heck he was doing out that late anyway because he's usually in bed or getting ready to. I thought I saw someone in the car with him and thought my mom must have been with him. I just assumed they were going to rent a movie or something. So I got home, and there was my dad's car in the driveway. I walked in, and he and my mom were watching TV. I told them about what I saw. They said they had never left. They had been there all night. My mom told me she also saw someone that looked like dad in his car in that same area. And when she called him to see why he didn't wave at her, he told her that he was not even in town yet from leaving work. It wasn't him. But I wonder if when I saw him, I was seeing his dream or something. Because at the time I saw his double, he had fallen asleep in his chair watching television. 2. But Sam sleeps on the floor. It was 1990 or 1991 in East Chicago, Indiana, at my home. My best friend Nikki and I had a couple of friends over from out of town for a few days. My friend and I slept in the bed. Sam and Whiskey Man slept on the mattress on the floor. Everyone had dozed off except me. All of a sudden, I heard some rumbling at the window in the living room. I woke Nikki and asked her if she heard the noise. She said no. She was sleepy, so she dozed back off. I heard it again, like someone was trying to break in. I woke her again, but she still didn't hear anything. Just when she was about to doze back off, she heard it. The guys were still asleep, so Nikki and I got out of the bed and were debating on who was going to go look. I ended up going. I peeked around the bedroom wall and there was Sam, the guy who was on the floor asleep, trying to open the window, as though he wanted to get out. I was so shocked and in disbelief of what I was seeing. I said, Sam, what are you doing at the window? Yet I could also see him asleep on the floor. I mean, I was looking at him on the floor and at the window at the same time. Nikki came in and saw the same thing. She and I did a double take. All the while, I'm talking to Sam at the window. Sam in the bed is yelling, I'm right here. What are you talking about? The Sam at the window had on the same clothes, glasses, hair, everything. It was unbelievable. 
We still talk about that to this day. 3. I saw my double. I moved to Boise, Idaho in 1993. Shortly after I moved here, people I didn't know would come up and say weird things to me, as if they were finishing an earlier conversation. The first time I remember, a young guy with long, dark hair came up to me and said, I'll see you at Fred's tonight, right? And he nodded and left, even though I didn't do anything but look at him. I thought he had mistaken me for someone else. Once I went to the Emmett Cherry Festival, a few miles away. I had never been to Emmett before in my life. A lady at one of the stalls started to yell at me that she had told me yesterday to never come back. I told her I hadn't been there yesterday. She got right in my face and asked if I was calling her a liar. My mom was with me and tried to tell her I was in Boise the day before but she just threatened to call the cops. We hurried away and avoided her the rest of the day. Then my friends started accusing me of ignoring them. They would ask why I didn't talk to them or why I was rude to them at a place or time I wasn't where they claimed. Then my mom started. She actually went up and talked to this me. When she asked the next day why I seemed so out of it and kept looking at her weird at the coffee clutch, I was like, I've never been there. This is my mom. She spoke to this person and still thought it was me. Finally, I saw this girl. I saw her in 1997 when I was 21 across the 8th Street Marketplace. It's a small area downtown where fountains spray out of the pavement and bands play. I swear she was dressed very similar to me in clothes I could easily own and people claim I dress weird. She had on a black leather jacket nearly identical to my own. She had my height and build. I had waist-length, almost black, super straight hair, and so did she. After staring for a minute, while she gave me a very dirty look, I noticed she looked a tiny bit older than I did. Or at least I thought so. Remember, my mom didn't notice this, so maybe it was just my perception. It was like looking into a distorted mirror that showed two to five years into the future. The absolute only real difference between us is that she was pushing a stroller with a little boy in it. He was blonde, maybe one or a little older with dark blue eyes. He looked nothing like her. I tried to get close enough to talk to her and see who she was, but she took off. I called to her to wait, but she turned a corner, and when I got there, about three yards behind her, she was nowhere to be seen. I have never seen her again. The last time a friend saw her was four years ago. Did she move away? Is she a real person who happens to look so much like me, my own mom talked to her for almost half an hour without noticing? What's even weirder? In 2003, I had a son. My now ex-husband has black hair. Our oldest son has blonde hair and dark blue eyes and looks nothing like me. But I noticed that in his 18-month-old baby pictures, he looks almost exactly like the little boy in the stroller pushed by my not-very-friendly double. I wonder if she now has two sons like I do. Where did she go? Or why does no one mistake us anymore? 4. Meet my double in the woods? I saw myself walking alongside myself, I believe in June or July of 1991. I was staying at a weekend farm my family has in southeast Texas, located in the Big Thicket, a relative sliver of indigenous hardwood forest land, the remains of a vast arboreal forest that once stretched from Texas to the Atlantic coast of the U.S., there were three other people staying with me at the farm that weekend. The farmhouse sat in a large cleared area amidst 40 acres of land in all. The rest of the acreage is heavily wooded, and the back property line bordered on millions of acres of replanted pine forest owned by one of the large paper lumber corporations. But the property was not really isolated or secluded. A farm-to-market road ran in front of it, about a quarter mile from the house. Three miles down the farm road was a four-lane state highway. 
Around 10 o'clock or so that evening, I announced that I was going to walk down to close the front gate to the property, along that farm road. This was something that was normally done in the evenings, and no one paid me any mind. I walked out the back door of the house, then down along a driveway to the open pasture toward the gate. I was following the outline of the dirt driveway across the open land in front of the house. I had a flashlight, but was not using it. The farm was far enough away from civilization that there was very little, if any, ambient light, and I was trying to see how far I could get in the dark without using artificial light. On this night, there was a half moon, and once my eyes adjusted, I could see fairly well. About two-thirds of the way from the house to the front gate, the cleared area ended, and the rest of the way down the driveway was through thick woods on both sides and a heavy canopy overhead. It was sort of a tunnel effect, and I knew it would be too dark for me to see anything once I got in there. So I was reaching to my back pocket for my flashlight when I had the distinct sensation someone or something was walking nearby. I immediately thought of a wolf, a bobcat, or a feral hog, all of which I had seen running along those woods at one time or another, and none of which I particularly wanted to encounter in the dark. I stopped suddenly to see if I could hear a footfall. I did not. I was still about forty feet from the woods, out in the open, so I looked around in the moonlight, but could not see an outline of anything. I started walking again, and immediately had the same sensation of not being alone. This time, I kept walking, but glanced to my right, and that is when I saw myself. It was an exact copy of me. Clothes, hair, gait, everything. I stopped, and so did it. I did not feel fear, but did not turn to face the apparition full on either, for fear of somehow losing it if I did. We stood and looked at each other, an awkward way of putting it, for several seconds, though it seemed longer. My twin never spoke, and neither did I, but somehow I got the sense it was trying to tell me, do not worry too much, everything will be fine. Then I felt the strong compulsion to start walking again. I was right up to the edge of the woods by then, so I looked over to my right again, and it was gone. I should say, at the time, I had just been through the breakup of a long-term relationship and some setbacks otherwise, and was fairly depressed and had been drinking a lot lately, including that night. I am certain whatever I saw was not a drug-induced apparition, however. Either my desperate need at the time for some positive reassurance caused me to imagine this second me, or it was some other external stimulus that caused me to see myself walking with myself that night. I can say that at the time, all my instincts were that what I saw was entirely outside myself, but somehow connected to me. And unlike many doppelganger stories I've read, I sensed no malevolence at all. I felt quite calm and somehow reassured, not only at what I think my twin was trying to convey to me, but also at the thought that there was another me out there with another agenda entirely, but also concerned for my well-being. Something like that. I have had my share of bad times, both before and after this incident, along with the good. I had other periods of excessive alcohol consumption as well. However, this is the only experience I have ever had involving anything that could even remotely be considered paranormal. 5. Doppelganger Spotted All Over Town This is a doppelganger story that has been developing over the past 10 years or so. I live in the area of Ellsworth, Maine, and have been getting reports of someone who looks just like me, but have never met him. Occasionally, people greet me thinking they are talking to someone they know, but... I don't know the people who greet me. 
One of these occurrences was when my friends told me they had seen me in my car at a store in Ellsworth, but I had not gone to Ellsworth that day. This happened a few times with the same friends. They saw someone who looked like me at a store, exactly, down to every last detail of my face and hair, the way I dress, my beard, eye color, and told me, and in these cases I always told them honestly, I wasn't there at that time. I was in another area or didn't go to town that day. This became quite a common occurrence for a few years, around 2001 to 2003, or in that general time period. Another time I was in a store and a guy said, Weren't you up at the races yesterday? How did it go? Or something to that effect. I hadn't been to the racetrack and never go there. People do this quite often and sometimes I get the feeling I am being treated in a certain way as if I am another person entirely. Or the people I meet as brief acquaintances think of me as someone else, although I socialize very little. Then, in Walmart, a woman approached me and greeted me as Nathan, so I think that is the name of my doppelganger, but again, I have never met him. Another time, a friend said her friend had seen a guy who looked like me, driving a small white car like mine and wearing caps as I do quite often driving at a very high speed on Route 1, driving like a maniac, very reckless. And this had happened quite often so that the guy was seemingly getting a reputation for very wild driving habits. The funny thing is, my car can make the speed limit, but I don't push it much over that, and only exceed the speed limit a bit anyway, and generally am a very slow and conservative driver, always wearing my seatbelt and glasses, and am always fairly timid and afraid of getting into a car crash. I have had two major car crashes in my life, so I really take driving very seriously. I don't drink, smoke, or use any drugs except a small dosage of prescribed Ritalin. So from the way that guy was described, I said, no, I don't drive like that at all. The car can't accelerate like that. Then after a while, I was talking with my friends and I said, remember how you kept saying you had seen me in Ellsworth but I wasn't there? several times over the past year or so? And my friend said, What are you talking about? I said, You know, you kept saying you saw a guy who looked just like me in Ellsworth, in stores and stuff, and he always looked exactly like me down to the last detail. She said, No, I don't remember seeing anyone who looked like you. I said, What are you saying? Don't you remember how you kept seeing me in Ellsworth and waving at me, and I always ignored you or acted like I didn't notice you at all? And my friend said, No, I never said that. I didn't see anyone who looked like you in Ellsworth. So this entire thing has been very strange for me. I am not sure if it is an actual doppelganger experience, but I am thinking... Maybe it is, because no matter what I do or who I talk to, I cannot find out anything much about this other guy who seems to live somewhere in this area. Anyway, that's about as weird as it gets. It doesn't seem threatening or evil or anything, just sort of odd and a bit weird and a bit funny. It's mysterious to me. 6. Doppelganger or future self? When I was in junior high school, roughly about 14 years old, probably 1995, I lost a friend because of a doppelganger incident. Back then, I was shy, awkward, and terrified to break the rules. I did my homework, never lied to my friends, family, or teachers, and generally got on my friends' nerves for being less than adventurous at times. And... I believe 8th grade, right after summer break, I went over to my friend Jen's house to hang out. She was one of my recently made cool friends. She was a little less nerdy, a little more outgoing, painted her fingernails lime green and caution orange. She was lively to say the least. That day, maybe a few weeks into the school year, she confronted me about my summer activities. While she was at our school's annual picnic at Kennywood Amusement Park, she spotted me walking over near a ride called the Wave Swinger, 
which is now part of Lost Kennywood, also known simply as The Swings. She claimed I was walking with some guy and smoking a cigarette. Of course, knowing how out of character that would be for me, she grilled me all in one breath about the guy and why I didn't tell her I was going and when did I start smoking. I was stumped. The more I tried to reassure Jen that I had not been to Kennywood that summer and that I had still never touched a cigarette in my life, the angrier she got, accusing me of lying to her. I have never been one to make up stories for the sake of looking cool or trying not to look lame. I thought she knew me better than to think I would lie about something that stupid. If anything, one would think I would have made up a story like that trying to look cool, not deny one. At any rate, Jen never did believe me. She sulked the rest of the time I was at her house, and we never really spoke after that. I tried talking to her, but she simply ignored me and even did the classic high school route. Spot the person you're trying to avoid in the halls and quickly walk the other way and try to be invisible. A few years later, my family moved an hour north and I started classes at a new school. The summer after my first year in the new school, I joined my best friend Michelle for my old school's Kennywood picnic. I was just about to turn 17. That day, I ran into a guy I had met only once. My old school had a graduating class of nearly 900 students most years, and I only knew him as the self-proclaimed King of Twister. That summer, he was wandering around the park in 85-degree heat, dressed in black and brown and maybe dark blue. He kind of resembled Lane Staley with brown hair. I lost sight of him and went back to trying to stay cool in the shade while I wrote bad poetry. I didn't even realize who he was when he tapped me on the shoulder and asked me if I was a poet. It was such an odd encounter. But then everything revolving around that man's presence in my life has always been a little on the odd side. The first meeting had been short-lived. He waxed mysterious, said something about finding his friends, and took off. I saw him that evening from the top of the Ferris wheel, wandering around Lost Kennywood a good half mile away. For kicks, I talked my friends into going over there. Here's where it gets even weirder. I almost literally ran into him. We got to talking and decided to walk around Lost Kennywood so as not to lose track of our respective groups. By the time we came to the Wave Swinger, I had lit a cigarette after we discovered that we both smoked. So, two or three years after having been accused of walking through Kennywood Park near the Wave Swinger, smoking a cigarette and talking to some strange guy, I was doing just that. Was what Jen saw a glimpse into the future? Like a fold in time or something? Was it a doppelganger? Or maybe I just subconsciously arranged all that so that Jen could be right, even if her timing was off. I certainly don't know. I didn't put two and two together for a few years after I met that guy. I had completely forgotten about Jen's accusations. I do, however, know that meeting that guy, who will remain nameless, was some sort of predestined thing. He's been in my life a bit like a stray cat off and on for about 11 years now, and has always managed to show up track me down or randomly bump into me exactly when I really needed someone and no one else could be there. 7. Time Warp or Doppelganger I have a doppelganger slash bilocation slash time warp story for you. I swear this really happened to me. I do not really know what happened, but I do have a few theories. In the late spring or early summer of 1992, my younger sister, who was nine, and I, 11 years old at the time, were living with our parents in a house in rural south-central Pennsylvania. She and I had just returned home from the store. It was the early afternoon on a Saturday, and the day was uncommonly misty and cool. I challenged my sister to a game of hide-and-seek. She agreed as long as she could go back in the house at 2 p.m. to watch her favorite cartoon show on television. I looked at my watch. It was 
so I figured we had plenty of time to play a few games. She decided to hide first, so I went to the front door of our house and counted to ten. Ready or not, here I come, I shouted, and started around the front of the house toward the carport on the north side of the house. My parents had just bought a new refrigerator a couple of days before, and had left the large box it came in out in the carport. I figured my sister would want to hide in there. I quickly rounded the corner to the carport and looked at the box laying on the floor. <laughs> I saw a shock of blonde hair enter the box from the open side, which was opposite me. The box even moved a little. <laughs> I laughed, knowing that I had caught her so easily. I ran over to the box and looked inside. The box was empty. <laughs> Perplexed, I stood around for a minute, wondering how I could have missed her. Had she been there at all? I reasoned that I had just imagined seeing her and continued walking through the carport toward the backyard. I stood there scanning the spacious backyard for a few moments, thinking of where to look next. I returned my gaze to the middle of the yard and saw my sister, plain as day, standing about 50 feet from me, smiling in her typical way. <laughs> but there was something creepy about it. Then she waved at me. I thought that she had given up the game because she wanted to go into the house. Strangely, she was wearing a yellow t-shirt, different than what she had been wearing when we started playing. Something was strange about her. Somehow, I was afraid to go tag her. I started walking out to talk to her, I must have looked down briefly, but when I looked up again, <laughs> she was gone. The closest thing for her to hide behind would have been a couple of apple trees standing about another 50 feet behind her. I knew it was impossible for her to have run back there that fast. I was amazed and very scared. I got a chill. Something was not right. Was I seeing things? I literally stood there for a few moments trying to make sense of it all. Twice she had been there. Twice I was wrong. At this point I was feeling impatient to find her, and anxious, I imagined, to prove that I wasn't losing my mind. So I walked around to the south end of the house where a large maple tree stood. In our frequent hide-and-seek games I would often hide up in the limbs of that tree, but either way I was running out of places to look. I walked around the corner and looked at the tree, then scanned the area around it. Looking back at the tree, I saw someone standing behind the tree trunk. Whoever it was wore a purple shirt, which stuck out the side from behind the tree. Taking care not to look away for one second, I fixed my gaze on the tree and ran at it. I went behind the tree, fully expecting to find her. She was not there. <laughs> I looked frantically all around the area, even in some shrubs at the very edge of the yard, to no avail. At this point, I went back in the house to tell my mother that I couldn't find my sister and that I thought something strange was going on. And there, on the living room couch, sat my sister, wrapped in a shower robe with a towel around her head, casually watching TV. I gasped in disbelief and asked her where she had been. She said that she had been hiding in the box, but I never came by. So she went to the backyard, and not seeing me at all, she hid behind the maple tree for a while. She told me that she must have waited an hour without seeing me, so she got tired and went inside, almost expecting to see me inside as well. And that she had taken a shower before sitting down to watch her cartoon. It was already after 2 p.m., I told my sister that I had seen her wearing different shirts that she indeed owned. She thought it was strange, since she had just been thinking earlier about what to wear when she got out of the shower. I can only theorize about this experience, during which I seem to have had the power of psychic perception. I have a few theories. One, I somehow walked into a time warp, where I could see all my sister's earlier movements and that somehow she could not see me. Two, I was witnessing her doppelganger. Three, 
an entity that I would describe as a spirit impersonator appeared, just to taunt and confuse me. I must mention that no tragedy had befallen my sister or myself around that time or later, so the apparitions did not serve as a harbinger of doom. Though my sister and I considered the possibility that the old house next door was haunted, we cannot be sure, as the homeowners always denied, that it was. 8. Doppelganger asked for money. I have been a skeptic most of my life refusing to believe anything not seen with my own eyes. But the story I would like to share is one that has followed me my entire life. In the summer of 1988, I was 12 and out of school for a few months. I had been in my room, playing with Barbies, when I went to my family's kitchen. We lived in rural Tennessee, right outside of Chattanooga. My mother was sitting in her rocker with an odd expression on her face and asked me, "'Why do you need a dollar?' Of course, I knew nothing of her questioning, and asked her what she was talking about, and she said I had come out of my room and specifically asked her for money. When I said I had not, she took me by the arms and she said, something that looked and acted like you asked me for money, but I believe it was not you. Talk about being freaked out. She took me by the arms and said, Dear God, whatever it is, let it be gone from this house. At that exact moment, both the front and back doors flew open with a rush of wind. To this day, I will never forget that something pretended to be me to my mom. 9. I spotted my double with evil eyes. About a month ago, on a Sunday night, I went with a group of friends to a bar we frequent pretty often. Everyone knows us there, which is what makes this story even eerier. One of the waitresses told me that my twin sister was in there the previous Thursday. It's all fine and dandy, but I only have a brother. So I explained this to her, and she swore up and down that this girl was me. This bothered me a lot, so I was a wee bit freaked out. I arrived to work on Monday to find out that my twin was in here again and had applied for a position. The HR department thought I was playing a joke, but the problem is that I was in my office the entire time. A week goes by, and I had a bit of the flu, so I went into work about two hours later than usual. As I was walking to my office, I was reading a text message, but somehow I looked up and I saw me. This girl was identical to me. I was shocked and didn't know what to say. I'm not crazy, nor am I imagining things, but as this person looked into my eyes, I felt petrified. I couldn't breathe or move. Her eyes looked evil. So she kept walking, and I looked away. Not even a split second later, I looked back and she was gone. Completely. However, there is nowhere to go from where we were standing. This is possibly the scariest thing I have ever experienced. I have never seen her again, but there have been reports of sightings. 10. This guy had to be my twin. I was about 18 years old at the time, and living in Montreal, Quebec. A high school friend and I were having dinner at the Hard Rock Cafe in downtown Montreal. While waiting for dessert, I went to the bathroom, and as I was walking back to my table through the crowd, I spotted someone ahead walking in the opposite direction. I immediately got the feeling I knew this person. I watched him as he came toward me, and as he got closer, I became more and more sure that I, at one time or another, had known this person very well. He was walking and chatting with an older man that looked to be his father. Their accents sounded American. At about seven or eight feet away, he looked up at me. We both slowed our pace and looked directly at each other as we passed. He looked as bewildered as I did, and I started to get the impression I was looking at myself. He seemed to have my face, 
almost the same haircut, same hair color too, same build, and to top it all off, was dressed roughly in the same manner I was. Long, oversized t-shirt, blue jeans, and a windbreaker. We passed each other, and both continued on our way without a word. When I reached my table, which was about 15 feet ahead of where I passed the lookalike, my friend looked up at me, and he looked puzzled too. He said he thought he just saw me walking by, but was puzzled because I was dressed in different colors and came from a completely different direction from which I had left. I immediately replied, You saw him too? He said yes, and that he tried to speak to him at first, thinking he was me, but backed off because he didn't recognize the clothes. Both confused, we began scanning the restaurant for this look-alike, and eventually saw him near the entrance, waiting with what seemed to be his family. We watched him for a couple of minutes, trying to figure out who he might be, but we came up with nothing other than the off-chance possibility that I was adopted and had a twin from the USA. I wanted to go speak to him before he left, but I'm a shy person as it is, and I had no idea what I would say to him. So I left it at that, and my friend and I finished our desserts and went home. I don't really believe in doppelgangers, but seeing this person was like looking in a mirror, and I will never forget the feeling it gave me. In these strange but true stories, we have proved once again that the world is still a mysterious place. If you have any strange stories that you would like us to read and share, please send them to strangebuttruestories at gmail.com. I'm Steve White. Until next time.